Thank you for joining me today on Good News with Twanda Black, where we're discovering some of the most inspiring trials to triumph stories and empowerment moments. Call up a friend and let them know it's time for some good news. Welcome everybody to Good News. I'm Twanda Black, your host. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And we're going to talk about what's happening with our men. Yes, we need to know that. So sit back, relax, enjoy our guest today, Roderick Mason. Good morning, Twanda. How are you? Hi, I am doing well. How are you? Great. Great to be here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, you are a certified bucket list coach, which you're going to tell us what that is, mm -hmm. a certified John Maxwell speaker, trainer, coach, and founder of Holistic Coaching Solutions, a platform focused on delivering high-end corporate training services. But today we're going to talk about our men and you can, you know, just kind of fill us in on what's going on. But first of all, tell us what is a bucket list coach? Bucket list coach, um, what we do is we conduct uh, one of two programs. One is a workshop where we invite, you know, uh, families, couples, uh, men, women, it's open to, to everyone. Uh, that's about two to four hours and that's held once. And then we have a life plan program <laughs> that's held once a month, but each go over 12 steps. And in that you will look at accomplishments not only from your past but things you want to accomplish in the future so we try and help pull things out of people um, that they'd like to see happen people they'd like to meet mm. uh, experiences they love to have and we encourage that uh, the biggest thing is we try and get you to take action on something so that uh, you begin a process of knowing what taking action on a dream, a passion, a goal, whatever that may be. Uh, and it's heavily encouraged in a very welcoming, uh, very supportive environment. Well, you know, and that's a good thing. Um, a lot of folks know what they want, but they have no idea how to get there. So, um, you know, it, it's it's good to have a coach to help you do that. Yeah, we, we go through so many different things and, and it's gonna be different for each person. Uh, sometimes it's frightfully emotional because we're asking you not only to, there's a reverse bucket list and a future bucket list, we're asking you to focus on uh, people you'd want to meet, uh, simple accomplishments, uh, and, and it can be something you, you maybe you want to, you know, uh, do a triathlon. Uh, mm. You could start small with like a little sprint triathlon, so it doesn't have to be the complete Ironman. Maybe it's to zip line uh, somewhere or, or just visit. I think most people think of it as, what places they want to see. Um, and that's great. That's part of it as well. So you'll talk about, you know, you want to see the Eiffel Tower or, or, or the pyramids, whatever that may be. But we also delve deeper into, um, you know, how can you be of assistance to others? So, you know, for myself, uh, every Christmas I like to adopt a family um, and, and we help that family out um, through gift giving um, or whatever it is they may need. Yeah. And, and, and when you start doing that, you realize um, a lot of times that you're not as bad off as you think. Um, That's when, right. When you, when you start giving and, and you start, and it can just be anything. Maybe it's a, a charity you want to raise money for. Mm -hmm. you know, if you've had someone uh, close to you affected by a particular illness. Maybe that illness foundate has a foundation that you can contribute to or take part in and you can volunteer somewhere. I encourage my son to, to volunteer at a food pantry. Um, so he's done that. And, and you, those types of things help you put things in perspective and mm -hmm. you have a better sense of not only where you are, but where you'd like to go. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very, very true. Very true. So let's talk about um, stress and mental health. And we're gonna talk about particularly our black men. I was looking at the statistics that you sent over and they were talking about burnout, that um, it's an occupational hazard. I, I know for me, I was burned out on my job and I know that my husband 
has been burned out on some of his jobs. So talk about what burnout is and what does that look like? Um, it, it's where you, you start to realize, okay, you know, I, I just don't have any more to give at this in this particular yeah. occupation or this particular company. Um, for for us as blacks, I mean, we know ourselves that too many times, no matter what our accomplishments are, we have to go above and beyond to prove that we're worthy of a certain position Absolutely. in the companies. Um, for black men, I mean, that, that becomes. I think a little harder because people already have preconceived notions as to what we are, what, what our background is. And, and it doesn't matter, again, going back to the accomplishments, how many degrees you have, how educated you are, people still see us in a certain light. Right. Um, you know, the, the story I think of is is, is the black man in St. Louis where the woman, you know, went viral where the woman followed him to his apartment because she didn't think he could afford to live in the building. Mm -hmm. um, that burnout comes from, you know, the, the fact that we constantly are thinking about how people perceive us uh, once we step outside of our comfort zone. And that comfort zone could be our, our own very home, our neighborhood, somewhere where we're comfortable. But oftentimes when we reached a certain level of success and we start moving on and we want to move into the more affluent areas, you still become aware that people are perceiving you a certain way or people right. are intimidated, afraid. You know, I I lived in a nice neighborhood and I would just walk to the gym and you would see if you're walking towards someone and they're coming towards you, you know, people would switch their purses, women would switch their purses to the other side as though you mm. represented a threat. Um, you know, when when we're pulled over, um, whether it's just for a simple traffic violation, well, most people may see it as a mere inconvenience. I guarantee the average black man, our hearts pounding through our chest, yeah. thinking, okay, you know, there are very methodical steps that we all think about and things that we teach our sons, you know, make sure you've got your wallet uh, where the police can see, make sure you've got right. your your, your insurance and your registration where people mm -hmm. can be, you know, the, the, the most difficult part is for my generation, we like to dress. We don't like the wallet imprint on our pants. So you may have it in a bag. That bag mm -hmm. could be in the back of the car. Um, when you've got to reach back and grab that, you, you're trying to do it so that the police officer doesn't think you're doing something That's right. nefarious or, or, or that you're reaching for something. Yeah. Um, and, and so again, whether it's, us on the job trying to prove that we we deserve to be there and that we have the the, the skill set to be on this job and to do the job that we're hired for um walking down the street going to a gym uh, again getting pulled over just simple things that most people i don't think really think about you know uh, getting on an elevator in, oh, a, yeah. in a building for sure and so for th sure. those are a lot of things that begin to pile up and and can cause that that burn that burnout and, and the burnout is just simply the fatigue of of being a black of being man. right of, of just being you know just being who you are being in your skin yeah. um and, and you know how difficult is that for a black man to understand and and feel okay to be in his skin although society says you're not worthy, you're not it, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. So how does the man, cause I'm going kind of going through that with my 30 year old son who, um, you know, 10 years in the military, high honors, uh, master's degree, all of that, but still it concerns him the way people look at him and the way, and they don't have no clue about who he is. Right. And, and just ha trying to have that conversation with him about what well, you are worthy. You got it. He says, I know that, but it just, it makes him angry about the way he's seen as a black man. I think um, it begins, you continue to, to, I'm sure you've instilled him with a great deal of confidence and continue to talk to him and tell him there is, and not every company is that way. Right. I worked for a company where I was a regional 
and we had a regional meeting uh, of all the, the, the big managers. Um, we had it off site and everyone has spoken to me on the phone, but they didn't, <laughs> they hadn't seen me. So when I walk into, oh, yeah. into this conference room, I think they thought I was hotel help or someone wow. not meant to be there. Because the, the first thing that happened was, excuse me, may I help you? Mm. And I said, I'm Roderick from High Park. And, and they were, oh, so you go through that. I mean, I, I inevitably left that company because burnout, I didn't feel appreciated when a, a position was about to become available and it was in my district and I should have been up for it. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to look past me and actually demote me to another position. Whoa, okay. And this was despite that sales were up 35%. Um, we were having events that were very successful. Um, but you you just keep pushing. I, I, I think mm -hmm. that we have a resilience that I, I don't think any other race has to tap into because of, of, of the constant things that we have to go through. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for a better word, but the, 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 just the things we go through, there isn't a better way to put that. I mean, just well, the, it's, it's institutional. So it's, you know, it's every day, all day. So it's what happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the only thing I can say is, is, is going back to your question is, yeah, just continuing having those, those uh, conversations. I mean, there are um, things that, you know, if, if he could focus on something else and just leave that at home, because that's what I began to do. Um, mm -hmm. Once I left the place for me, uh, working out became, you know, a motivating factor because that was my time to completely zone out. Um, and and sometimes it, it gives you the, the opportunity to work through the things that are, are worrying you. So mm -hmm. that, that time to yourself, find a hobby, a passion, something, and that's what I thoroughly encourage in a lot of the groups. You know, if you find a hobby, that's going to give you the opportunity to, to process some of the things that are concerning you that may be causing, you know, the, the, the anguish or depression. I would hope it doesn't get too far where you go into a deep depression. But mm -hmm. finding those things that help you work through it um, and that person that you can talk through, uh, talk with and talk through with them. So uh, th those are things that we, we heavily encourage, uh, even in the groups. And again, the, the groups are very supportive, but just finding outside of that, just someone who's supportive, um, finding that outlet, I, I think it's crucial. Um, and as long as that outlet is healthy, also music, um, if you read studies, is so helpful. Um, How about therapy? Did you, did you seek therapy during that time? Um, I, I didn't seek um, therapy directly. I, you know, I, I, I put together a resume and thought, you know, I'm not going to let them tear me down. Um, the, the, the irony is that I had so many compliments from clients that told me they, they saw the change in, in the place. Mm -hmm. They saw, um, and they, they thought it, I mean, it was weird because one of my big, one day, one of my bosses was standing right next to me and a client comes in and says, you bring class to this place. Mm. Ironically, it was a white man and, and, and all my superiors were white. And so uh, he, he's telling me this and that alone, you have no idea. I'm like, okay, that gave me a little more, uh, a little bit of a boost. And so, you know, those little, little things help. Um, but I, no, I didn't seek therapy. I sought another job and then eventually I, I went on to work for myself. <laughs> so that was your therapy, right? <laughs> yeah. Just getting out. I, 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 I started focusing on a passion and, and moved in that direction. Yeah. Uh, my son works out. Yeah. He's, he's a gym rat too, but, um, you know, I, I feel like he's settling into a new job right now. So I feel like you know, maybe he'll go and start coaching like he used to and doing some other stuff that really fulfills him. So he doesn't, like you said, think about and focus on that thing, because again, it's institutional. It's not going anywhere. It's not. It's, it's really not. 
Yeah. Sometimes you can prove people wrong. And I've been on jobs where, again, people have you pegged a certain way mm -hmm. and you do prove them wrong. And again, I've, I've been fortunate because in, in one particular situation, there was someone who saw me a certain way. When I proved him wrong, he acknowledged it. You know, he, yeah, yeah he did. I, I was misrepresented and th that he didn't know the full story. So he turned around and I pray that, you know, that can certainly happen for your son. Um, sometimes. Do you, do you think that, you know, in, in those situations, they're judging you by our entire, um, our ethnicity they're judging us by our, our what they see i mean because we're all in the human race so it's not race mm -hmm. but they're judging us by uh, this is what african americans do and this is who you guys are and so they put you all in a bag all of us actually they put us all in a bag and judge us from media or what they've seen on television or you know somebody cutting up on the street or whatever and so everybody's in that light um you know, it's always interesting when they say, well, I have a black friend. I got black friends, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's a joke between us. But, yeah. you know, we, we we hear that and see that all the time. And um, sometimes you're, you're just judged by everybody, by the entire group. And it's so unfair. But there's nothing yeah, I, to do about it. I, I believe a lot of it has to do with media and, and the way yeah. media portrays us. And if... Absolutely. If, if, if there were, I mean there needs to be more people like you so that you are you know uh feeding positivity into the community um but the media i think is a is, is, is a worst part of it because oh, yeah. it's always showing um us in a bad light absolutely um, there i was just watching a special when it comes to us and poverty you know, we're always seen as the people who are lazy and we need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we need to do this. And people aren't thinking about the fact that, you know, the education uh, in, in minority communities and the food deserts that exist. That's right. Are a societal problem. Mm -hmm. And that we deserve, the same, right. yeah, and yeah. we deserve the same opportunities as every other community. You know, we, we need to encourage stores to come into our communities and, and and we don't want you know the 30 or 40 year old books for our children we want yeah. you know the, the ipads and the, mm -hmm. the net books for our, our children as well um the other part is you know black men we seem to be at the top of all the bad categories and at the bottom for all the great categories and you know we yeah. They're more, you know, people focus on they're more of us in jail than are in, in college. The people mm -hmm, focus mm -hmm. on, you know, um, the fact that we're more likely to contract certain um, preventable diseases, you know, prostate cancer and, and, and diabetes. And, and, and with, oh, yeah. We're at the top of all of those lists. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and again, that's that's a societal problem because you the, again, going back to the food deserts, we don't have. Uh, access to proper food um, and, and healthy foods at a reasonable price. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's crazy when you can get a hamburger cheaper than you can get a salad. Oh yeah, you know, in, in, in sure. most places. Um, the, the the other thing is is the government has to change the way it's doing things as well because they aren't doing us any favors. Um, with the processed foods and, and we have to advocate that, you know, certain dyes aren't used in foods and, and certain chemicals because That's these right. companies these companies are especially the multi global companies, they are allowed to make foods a certain way for the American market that they absolutely can't do in other countries. Yeah. You know, and especially are, in their own country, yeah. Yeah, I mean, things that have been banned for, for, for generations in other countries, we still allow to be put into our food and water yeah. system. Um, I, think, I think that us being such a capitalist society um, that anything goes, if it's going to make money, who cares that it's hurting millions of people? You know, um, who cares that 
um, you know, the kids can't think because they're eating that red dye or drinking that red dye. You know, they don't care about that stuff. All they care about is the bottom line, which is money. Right. Period. Exactly. Period. So let me ask you this, and this will be the last question. Um, I, I see that uh, males have a suicide rate 3.7 times higher than females. Um, uh, let's see, the largest group by age and gender, the highest suicide rate is males 65 and older, and then males 45 to 54. What do we do as the helpmates, helpmates, partners, collaborators, to, to help our black men along and to lift them up and, and, and to really recognize when they're suffering? Um, as black men, we tend to internalize a lot of things. Yeah. So sometimes, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes we don't give off the signals uh, that are easily read. Um, but if you understand, if someone close to you is having it, it, they may bring it up in passing. And if they bring it up in passing and it doesn't seem quite right, you know, keep asking about that situation. Um, most of us will open up to at least one person, you know, um, so encourage the, if you can't keep pushing, encourage them to open up to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it stems from the fact that for, again, going back to how much we have to prove ourselves in the workplace, it goes back to, you know, what we do for a living, we take on as an embodiment of who we are. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so if, my job is what I am, right? Yeah, or, or what I built myself up to be. So, right, I mean, right. especially if you're mm -hmm. if you're uh, an entrepreneur or a professional in any way that, and you are that degree person, if you've been forced out of a situation, um, that can bring on depression. And understand that maybe, you know, it may take some time, but keep pushing through and talk, trying to talk to them. Um, if they're an entrepreneur and 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 and, and the business has somehow gone sideways um, for whatever reason. They've lost a contract. Um, maybe there, there was a mismanagement of funds, but not, you know, not intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, help them through that, uh, or just let them talk. And, and sometimes the biggest thing is um, when you're talking, actually listen. Um, I, I think sometimes, you know, you want to resolve this, at least for men, we want to oh, resolve yeah. issues, Certainly. but sometimes we just need to talk and, and, and let it out. Um, the other part is, uh, for some people, believe it or not, for men, there are times where it is hormonal. Um, mm. You see the commercials for low T yep. and it's, it's testosterone, y'all. <laughs> yeah. It's played yeah. up as that, as though. It's just, you know, a sexual issue or ED. They, 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 they portray it in ways that, that only pertain to sex, but mm -hmm. low T can cause depression in men. It can cause weight gain. It can cause moodiness and, and an assortment of things that, you know, uh, people don't pay attention to. So, you know, Another thing is, is getting him to the doctor. We don't go to the doctor as often as we should, True. but encouraging him to see a doctor that specializes in, in men's health uh, will be crucial too. I mean, it's, it's a simple uh, blood draw. They can test, see just how low it is. Yeah. Um, and that can be surprisingly a quick turnaround for some men over, mm. over 40. Um, but just again, checking in on him to see how yeah. he's going, and, and and being that 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 soundboard that he can just talk to without judgment. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, with, with, no with, judgment with, on him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we get enough of that anyway. I mean, again, right. going back to whether we're walking down the street, we're always. I guarantee you, I don't know a black man who isn't conscious of when he's in an unfamiliar place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's looking at him, how they're looking at him, how he's right. being perceived at that particular right. point. Mm -hmm. um, we're noticing, like I said, when when people's purses or if suitcases, anything's shifting oh, yeah. as oh, we yeah. approach or because we're nearby, we see that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll smile and act like it's no big deal, 
but sometimes you know you can be having those rough days and you can't i don't i can't believe this person thinks i probably have more money in my pocket than they do in that purse okay <laughs> you know so and and, yeah. and and they know i i work for a living right you know? um but yeah just just talking to them being being there for them so in terms of what soulmates and helpmates can can do is is, is just be there when they when they most need you support absolutely yeah. absolutely I, I always say you know a man and a woman's home should be their castle where they don't get the judgment and the put downs and the looks and all you know it should be a stress-free zone because we get enough on the outside world we really do yeah we it do should really be your sanctuary yes 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 um roderick tell people where they can learn more about uh, the bucket list coaching and all of the other things that you do. Um, you can go to holisticcoachingsolutions.com. I am on all of the social media platforms at Roderick Mason and at Holistic Coaching Solutions. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you can find me there. I try and post nothing but positive and helpful information every day on those platforms check it out and then go to holisticcoachingsolutions.com. Thank you so much for joining us and just sharing. Um, uh, this Again, mental health is, is everything right now. Uh, I, I've been saying that we all have a little bit of PTSD from 2020 from when the, the virus started and, you know, just the unknown of it all. I think we're doing better now, but a lot of people didn't make it out of there. So um, we, we've got to be more aware uh, pay attention to your sisters and brothers and uh, be a support where you can. Roderick Mason, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Swanda. Glad to be here. Hi, and thank you so much for joining me for Good News today. If you'd like to be a guest, contact me at goodnews at thepgnetwork.org. I'll see you next time, y'all. Be blessed.